And sometimes, as they say, opposites do attract and certainly similar profiles can also attract each other. The reality with DISC is that there are conflicts all over the DISC model. So 2Ds can be a very unproductive relationship because they like to both have their own way and do things their own way. 2Is can be unproductive because both of them like to have the center of attention or they like to talk at the same time or they want to share their ideas at the same time. And 2Ss can be slow to get going and 2Cs can essentially overanalyze things. Um, so we could also say the same thing about a D and a C or an I and an S or whatever the case might be. There's conflicts everywhere. And so it's not so much what your profile is, it's more about how you understand your behaviors and whether you know what you do. And if you realize, for example, if you're a high I and you know that you like to discuss and talk and share your ideas, self-awareness would suggest that you need to also listen and ask the other person for their ideas and not interrupt to then get your ideas out again. So it's not so much about the profile, it's more about your own awareness of your own behaviors. I know from my own experience, I had massive issues with, and no offense to the eyes, I ended up rowing with one really successfully. It's the most enjoyable combination that I ended up having, but he was a high eye and a lot of his behaviors were really quite different to mine. And so a D brings energy, but they bring a level of blowtorch style energy. It's very focused and defined and eyes bring an energy. The energy is more like a, a, a sort of a wildfire or bonfire style energy. It's, 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 it's not quite as channeled as what a D's energy is. And so, you know, his energy was seen in talking to other people, having off topic conversations. When we would get off the water, he'd always move on really quickly to the next thing or the next person who was in his sight. And I found that behavior really frustrating because I saw it as a lack of, for example, professionalism. But you know, he saw my behavior really frustrating too, that I was too serious and you know, couldn't actually look like I was enjoying myself, which is true. And so the reality is, is that again, it's not actually the behavior, which is the challenge. It's the fact that at that time of my career, and you know, I'd been to almost three Olympics before I really deeply understood DISC, you know, I didn't have enough awareness. And so the fact is, is that when you have a behavioral clash with someone, you know, there's always a way of resolving that if you can understand the benefits that that behavior brings. That same athlete that I was referring to, I ended up rowing with him in the final stages of my career and having just an extraordinary combination together because when it was five o'clock in the morning and he turned up all energetic and enthusiastic, yeah, he was often five or 10 minutes late. But in that, at that stage, I didn't care because I valued the energy that he brought. And we actually had a conversation whereby I said to him, mate, if, if you don't feel like you're energetic enough to come down today and practice, just let me know and it's, it's perfectly okay. I'll go out and train by myself because I realized it was more important for him to be enthusiastic and energetic uh, than to turn up and not enjoy it. And so his enjoyment of the sport actually helped me to appreciate you know, all of the other things that go with enjoying the sport other than just having the boat go as fast as possible. And so the point here is really important is that you have to look at the other people who you might have a clash with because it's not about them. It will be about you. And importantly, try to find reasons to value, not just understand, but to value their behaviors and how it can actually help you.